everybody. Thank you for joining us for the Financial Brokerage webinar today, College Planning 123, The Life Insurance Solution with myself, Brian Lysing, as your host. Uh, we'll begin in just a minute here, but I want to let everybody know that your lines are muted to cut down the background noise. You will have an opportunity to ask questions at the conclusion of the webinar. Your questions can be typed, and you can do that at the bottom of the control panel on your screen. Uh, for those of you not familiar with financial brokerage, we are a national life insurance, annuity, long-term care, and disability marketing organization. Uh, we work with producers uh, all across the country uh, helping folks uh, uh, sell more uh, uh, policies and uh, place clients with uh, the most appropriate carriers and products out there. Uh, this morning we're going to talk about ways to use um, life insurance in the college planning market, and uh, we've got uh, three uh, very distinct methods that you can utilize for that, and uh, we'll just get right into it here. We're going to discuss this morning ways that you can increase your life insurance production, one, by selling more policies, two, by selling higher face amounts, and three, by selling higher premiums. Those are all the your basic three ways of increasing your life insurance production, and you can accomplish each of those three through uh, the college planning marketplace here. Let's start right off with selling more policies. How are we going to do that in the college planning market? Well, it's simple. We're going to sell a Forrester's life insurance policy to everybody. Why do we want to do that? They offer scholarships. Forrester's is one of the 20 plus carriers we work with here at Financial Brokerage. They are the only fraternal insurance company that we're contracted with. And because of that, they provide several benefits to their members, including the ability for children of members or policyholders to apply for college scholarships. I don't know of many other carriers that can do this. There may be some other fraternals out there, but this is certainly the only one uh, that we work with. And the idea here is, is pretty simple. Every client of yours with school-age children should have a Forrester's life insurance policy. Now, this, in some situations, maybe lower-income households, this may be the only coverage that those parents have. For, uh, for other folks, middle to higher income, this can be an additional policy. You know, they, they write face amounts uh, as low as $50,000. There's no reason why a, a person can't have an extra $50,000 uh, just so that their children can apply for these scholarships. Now, what do they get out of these scholarships? Well, Foresters gives out, uh, if I remember right, uh, about 300 of, of these every year. They're worth $2,000 a year to the children. Uh, there are uh, some requirements uh, on the children that are applying. If I remember correctly, they have to keep a, a B-plus average or better. They have to perform some community service. There's an essay that they write, and they do have to actually apply for the scholarship. And uh, at the last count, uh, they average about 900 applicants per year. Again, they give out 300 of these, so uh, the students out there have about a one in three chance of getting this additional scholarship money and that's free money to them. It's not taxable. I mean, who wouldn't take advantage of this here? And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, one of the things that makes them appealing uh, would be their low face amount requirements. Uh, just about anybody should be able to afford a Forester's Life policy, and you shouldn't be uh, getting into any uh, uh, trouble with over-insuring a person or with financial underwriting because those face amounts are so low would be very easy to add uh, a real basic policy to uh, one parent uh, or the other. So this is something that you can utilize with all of your clients, anybody with any household with children in the household. I would talk to them about the scholarships through Foresters. Go out there and sell at, at least one policy, if not two or more, um, you know, as soon as you get off this webinar. Now, we spoke about a way to sell more policies. What about selling higher face amounts? That's easier said than done, though, right? Well. Maybe not. We've got some ways that can help you out there. First off, I'd like to start with the question. How do you determine how much coverage your client needs? Do you just guess? Do you throw out some numbers and, and see if they bite on something? Give them a quote for 100000 250, half a million, a million. I don't know what they need. I'm just going to give them these quotes and hope that they, they buy one of these. Or you just give everybody the same $100,000 or the same million dollars. Believe it or not, a lot of people work this way. and they don't sell a whole lot of life insurance. Well, here's a way to increase your production, and it's really easy. All you have to do is use a fact finder. 
A lot of carriers have these. We've got some generic ones. I'd be happy to email to you. But use a fact finder. Find out what your client's real needs are. Now, usually these fact finders cover two things. They cover uh, debts that the client has. And the mortgage is usually the largest uh, one of those. They also cover income replacement. Once all your debts have been paid off, your family is likely going to need some additional income to make up for what you're not able to provide for them because you've passed away. Well, there's a third item I think everybody uh, who's using a fact finder should add into that, and that would be uh, covering college expenses. You might be asking, well, how do I know what those costs are going to be? How do I calculate what college expenses are going to be? I've got uh, clients with, with the three and four year olds. I don't know what college is going to cost 15, 20 years down the road. Well, you might not know that off the top of your head, but we've got a couple of resources that we can help you out with over here. Uh, one of our carriers is Mutual of Omaha, and they have a, a comprehensive fact finder sheet. We'd be happy to uh, email out to you if you're contracted with them. Uh, it, it goes through the usual uh, debt replacement and, and income replacement, but it also has a worksheet in there to help you with college planning. It gives examples of uh, public and private universities, the cost of tuition today, and then uh, the estimated costs of uh, tuition uh, at, in five-year increments down the road, I think going out about 20 years or so. So you can use that as a great uh, estimator uh, and, and work with your clients and, and see how much they would like to include in their death benefit uh, to uh, help fund a college education if they're not around to do that themselves. And uh, we also have some software uh, that we can use in-house here. You can see an example of the, uh, the printouts on the left. And uh, we can help you out with that with your clients as well. So you know, just from going through these resources in the past, this step alone should add about $200,000 to every face amount, to every life insurance sale that you make per child. That's about what it's going to cost when, the, when you do crunch all the numbers. So, boy, if you could add $200,000 to every life insurance policy you sold last year, you'd have a lot more money in your pocket right now. So we've discussed ways to sell more policies uh, through Forrester's Life and their college scholarship program. We've discussed ways to sell higher face amounts simply by incorporating a fact finder, and not just that, but one that includes uh, uh, college expenses in the mix. Now let's talk about a way to sell higher premium policies. Well, the target market in uh, for this niche is going to be your middle to higher income individuals. And uh, the strategy we're going to take a look at here uh, would be uh, overfunding an index life policy, purchasing a whole life policy, or maybe purchasing a return of premium term life policy. Uh, there's no um, one very best way to do this. I, I think depending on your client, one of these three is going to work the best in their particular situation. But uh, let's start off by... Uh, uh, looking at, well, why are we even using life insurance to help fund a college education? Well, there are a lot of benefits that a life insurance policy will offer your clients that they really can't get anywhere else. I know uh, Section 529 plans are very popular funding vehicles for a college education, but, you know, they, they have uh, some strings attached to it. A uh, client could use mutual funds. Maybe they're going to use an annuity or CD at the bank and get almost no interest. Uh, but uh, life insurance brings a lot of extra things to the table. One is that the life insurance policy uh, offers the, your clients opportunity for cash accumulation and a death benefit, tax-free death benefit. So if you're using this as your vehicle to accumulate funds, that's great. If you pass away before you're able to, to do that, the death benefit is there to provide those same funds uh, to those children. The loans from a life insurance policy as long as it, it's not a modified endowment contract, are received completely tax-free. If you're using a return of premium term policy, that return of premium is received by the client completely tax-free. The life insurance money can be used for other needs. I know with the Section 529 plan, uh, that money has to be used for educational purposes. Uh, for a life insurance policy, if the child decides not to go to college, or maybe they're a genius and, and they've got a, a full-ride scholarship or they're a tremendous athlete and, and there are no tuition bills. Guess what? You're not locked into using this money for college. You can go out and buy a new car, buy a new boat, uh, just keep accumulating for retirement purposes. 
Uh, we also don't have to worry about maximum contribution limits here. As long as the policy is not a modified endowment contract, you're fine. You can keep dumping in money. Uh, we can design those so that they can accept more money uh, down the road. And uh, with three that uh, I mentioned earlier, the, the index life, the whole life, the return of premium, we have a safety of principle. If the stock market takes a nosedive, that college education fund is not going to follow along. Uh, you cannot lose money due to a, a market downturn with any of these products here. And uh, probably the, the biggest item, and the reason people like to use life insurance to fund a college education, is that the money inside a life insurance policy is excluded from the FAFSA calculations and the, at the federal uh, uh, student aid financial formula uh, form. And uh, they take into account other monies a person has in determining the family's expected contribution towards that college education. Money inside a life insurance policy is outside of, of that. They don't care how much you have in there. They're not going to ask you. So the family contribution uh, is not going to be expected to be as great, but yet you still have those funds available to use for whatever you want. So let's take a look next here on uh, some examples of uh, uh, funding these policies and, and take a look at how much money might actually be there for your clients to use. And uh, this first one here, this is a, an index life uh, policy. This is a product from uh, Genward Life, uh, their asset builder uh, index UL. And uh, I, I assume $10,000 a year was going in. Your clients may have $20,000 a year they want to put in. They may have $5,000. It's easy to do the math uh, starting off with a, a round number like $10,000. And uh, just pull a couple numbers out of this here. Uh, by uh, you know, the end of uh, year 10, uh, your client uh, should have accumulated uh, $132,000 in this particular product. Now let's say their their return wasn't that 8.05 percent. Uh, you know, what if they got only four percent? Well, half of that you'd be looking at, at about sixty-six thousand uh, dollars. Year 20, yeah, we're expected to see about uh, 425 thousand dollars in this policy. And again, if you took about half of that, why well, you, you'd be looking at, at just over 200 thousand. Or at the same rate, if the client only put in five grand a year, you'd be looking at 200 thousand dollars 20 years down the road. I think that can take care of a college education uh, even that far into the future. I'd say for some entrants, uh, maybe uh, uh, your broker dealer doesn't want you uh, using index life or, or you don't want to explain it to the client. Well, how about an old-fashioned whole life? Uh, I pulled this illustration from uh, MetLife, one of the top whole life carriers uh, uh, in the country right now. And uh, if we look here in year 10 uh, on their projected dividend scale, We've got about ninety-four thousand dollars accumulated, and again, if your client was only putting in five grand a year, we'd be looking at close to fifty thousand dollars, just ten years down the road, all guaranteed. And then uh, year twenty, uh, we'd be looking at close to three hundred thousand dollars. That's enough to pay for a couple college educations, I think. Now, uh, let's say, for example, maybe your client needs some more coverage, or they don't want to deal with a permanent plan. What about a return of premium? I think we forget about return of premium a lot. But I tried to match up the premiums here as close as I could. Uh, we're putting in uh, almost the same $10,000 a year. And uh, in year 10, with the money we could uh, uh, receive back, uh, we're looking at about $41,000. And uh, at the end of year 20, that's uh, the full return of premium. The client gets all their money back, nearly $200,000. Again, it's all hidden from that FAFSA report. And it's completely tax-free. No strings attached. client doesn't even have to use it for the uh, college education of, of their child or, or any other child. It's their money to use however they want. And they have complete flexibility with this. So I'm going to ask a couple of what ifs next here. What if mom and dad don't have the 10 grand or the 5 grand or the 2 grand a year to set aside for a, a college education for their children? Well, ask about grandma and grandpa. You know, if you've ever been on, on an appointment, uh, in a, a senior's home, and uh, you look at, at the pictures on their walls, what do you see? You don't see their kids. And you probably don't see them. You see their grandkids. Just ask them a couple questions about the grandkids, and you'll get them talking for a half hour, maybe an hour. They will go on and on and on. Grandparents love to talk about their grandkids. And all you have to do is, is ask them, what do you know if uh, these grandkids, 
children of yours have any sort of college education fund already started? Have their parents been able to do that for them? Or if you're speaking to the parents and they just don't have the money, ask them if grandma and grandpa, if they think grandma and grandpa would like to help out with this, or ask them how you can contact them. The best thing you can do is get that appointment and get in the door and be sit seated across the kitchen table from grandma and grandpa to have this conversation. They are much more likely to have the funds to help with this, and uh, you know they just might become clients of yours as well. There's a lot of things that uh, you can do in the senior market. Now, uh, another what if for you. What if your clients don't have 10 years to let a policy uh, uh, grow, or they don't have 20 years? What if these children are uh, finishing up junior high right now, or they've just started high school? We've got two, three, maybe four years at the most, and college is going to be there. That first tuition bill is going to come. What can we do? Well, we have got a uh, uh, company that we have a link to Smart Track Toolkit out on our website. Uh, they're not part of us, but I would certainly recommend using them. They work very well uh, when you have uh, folks involved with what I would call late stage planning. And uh, what the folks at Smart Track Toolkit will do, well, they'll really do the planning for you. Uh, you have to register with them and, and then have your, your client pay a fee. But then what happens is your client can go onto their website and they can basically complete that whole FAFSA form online. They can do it ahead of time, send it off to the SmartTrack folks, and they will analyze where your clients have their funds and uh, take a look and, and actually let them know right now what the expected family contribution would be. Then they're going to take it another step further and make a recommendation to your client that if they move certain funds from one uh, vehicle to another, that uh, their expected family contribution could be reduced tremendously, and their out-of-pocket uh, costs for, for college will uh, decrease uh, by quite a bit. Now, SmartTrack uh, Toolkit, they can't actually write life insurance or annuities, so that's where you come in. Your client now has this recommendation from a third party telling them, they need to move their money into a life insurance policy to hide it from this FAFSA uh, form. And that's where you can come in and, uh, and make the sale. Now, these are all great concepts, but you know, how are you going to get in front of people to talk about these things? Well, first off, I would start with your existing client base. That is your, your best uh, source for new business that you have uh, out there uh, by far. And uh, hopefully you're already staying in touch with your clients. I know a lot of folks will stay in touch with clients simply by calling them up once a year. Uh, maybe you have a regular uh, uh, newsletter or mailer that goes out to, you know, through the post office to them. Uh, if you're looking for a way to stay in touch with your existing clients here at Financial Brokerage, we do run a uh, email newsletter campaign for you if you want to sign up for that. Now, there's not a whole lot of cost involved at all if you're running business with us. Uh, we can actually, uh, there's a way for us to take care of that. But you can stay in touch with your clients on a monthly basis with a newsletter, and you may want to include some information out there on uh, different ways to, that you can help them with college planning. Uh, I would certainly ask for referrals as well uh, from any clients you know of that have uh, school-aged children. Uh, likely those kids are involved in, in, in uh, different sports and different clubs, and they're going to know some of the other parents out there. Uh, don't forget to ask for the referrals. If uh, you need to study up on, on uh, referrals, uh, we do have a, a self-study guide from Bill Cates, one of the nation's leading referral experts. We'd be happy to send that out to you as well. Um, if you're not already using social media, I would highly recommend that you get yourself a business Facebook account, maybe a business Twitter account. Uh, you should certainly be on LinkedIn. But uh, I tell you what, that's free advertising. Uh, all you have to do is post out there, and uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of people will see that. You can even purchase ads uh, if you like. But that's a great way, one, to stay in touch with the existing clients and also find new ones. Um, we have some other uh, uh, items available here at Financial Brokerage as well. If you want to be more proactive and reach out to new people, we have our uh, uh, leads on demand system, which gives you access to. Uh, a mailing list if you want to conduct a mailing campaign. And uh, you can uh, go out there and set your parameters, uh, find households with children and, and of a certain income level and in your area, 
and then uh, take those names and addresses to a local printing shop and, and uh, have them uh, print up your pieces and mail them out. Uh, if you want to conduct an email campaign, you can do that as well. We have the Prospect Finder tool, and uh, you can send out a, a stock email to uh, you know tens of thousands of people and uh, see if you can get some responses off of that. Um, in conjunction with social media, there is another company that we have a link to called Herdat, and if you don't want to do the social media advertising yourself, they would be happy to do that for you uh, for a fee, but uh, that, that's what they do, and they're really experts at that. So um, right now, I think we'll open it up to questions, and uh, as, as you're typing there, if you know of anybody else who would benefit from uh, the sales ideas we discussed in this webinar, you know, by all means, don't keep us a secret. Uh, pass along my number, which uh, should be on the screen, but it's not. I'll, I'll give it to you. It's 800-475-5555. My extension here is 3371. We're never too busy to see who else we can help out there. And uh, also let them know uh, we'll be uh, doing this same webinar just two weeks uh, from today. All right. Well, I would like to thank everybody for taking time out of your busy days to join us this morning. And again, if, if there's part of this you missed, you certainly feel free to join us again in two weeks. And uh, thank you for your time.